Hello, I'm Jeanette at Rustic Pathways, and today I'm chatting with Ashley Scully, who went on our Off the Map Alaska adventure this past summer, and she's an award-winning 19-year-old wildlife photographer, and she's going to give us some of her photography tips and tell us a little bit about her experience in Alaska. Hello, Ashley. Hello. So great to talk to you. You too. Tell us a little bit about yourself, especially how you got into photography. My name is Ashley. I'm 19. I go to Texas Christian University and I currently am riding on their Division I equestrian team. And I got into photography when I was eight years old. My grandparents took me on a trip to Alaska and I had just gotten a little point and shoot camera for my birthday. So I was just fascinated with all of the wildlife there and the biodiversity. And that's how I got into wildlife photography. And what are you majoring in? I'm an English major and I'm double minoring in communications and creative writing. And then I'm staying a fifth year to compete on my team because we have NCAA eligibility because of our COVID year. Oh, so wow. okay. I'm going to get an accelerated master's in English then. That's so impressive. Can you tell us about some of the awards that you've won? Yeah, so I'll go over like the, the big three for me. Um, the first was I won the 11 to 14 category in the BBC Youth Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition. It's known as WPY, like Wildlife Photographer of the Year. Um, so I got to fly out to London and it was a black tie event and the photos are all displayed in the Natural History Museum out there. So it was really exciting for me. I'd been uh, highly honored in the competition a couple of times. So I've flown out to London there before, but this time I won my category. So it was very exciting for me. And the second was I won the 2017 Youth Wildlife Photographer of the Year through the Winland Smith Rice International Photography Awards. So that was presented in the Smithsonian in the Natural History Museum in Washington, DC. And I had been entering that photography competition since I was maybe 12. And I, I got closer every year, I'd become a semifinalist. And then I had a couple highly honored uh, throughout a span of a few years. And then in 2017, I won and my friend had won the year before. So he got to pre present the award to me. And then one of my friends won the next year. So then I got to present the award to him. So it was really special. Uh, but the most recent one was I got the 2021 NANPA Outstanding Young Photographer Award. And that meant a lot to me because in 2017, I got into the NANPA North American Nature Photography Association program where I went to the Great Smoky Mountains in Tennessee with nine other students from across the country. And we got to learn from a bunch of mentors and it was sponsored by Canon. So we got to use a lot of Canon equipment and learn about uh, different aspects of photography. So it was really rewarding for me to receive that last year. That's amazing. And do you have a favorite animal that you like to photograph? Um, I'd say my big three or what I'm really known for are foxes, owls, and bears. Those are kind of my three. And I, I grew up in New Jersey. So the two most exciting animals around me were foxes and owls. So that's what I was shooting 24 seven. You went to Alaska with rustic pathways. So how was the wildlife photography there? I went to Alaska with Rustic this past summer. It's actually my fourth time going back there. And Alaska is such a meaningful place to me, especially because it kind of kickstarted my wildlife photography and that whole side of me. And I was just thrilled to go back. And we, we saw so, so many species of wildlife. It, it was almost like I was eight years old again and back on that trip. But we saw uh, grizzly bears in Denali. And we saw a lot of bald eagles and moose. And on our, one of our last days, we were in Seward, Alaska, and we went on this boat tour. And we saw a fin whale and an orca and a sea otter. Actually, the orca that we saw was a transient orca, which are harder to see. They're actually the more aggressive species of orca. Um, and their dorsal fins kind of curve to blend in with the waves because they hunt sea lions and everything. Whereas like resident orcas will just hunt like halibut and salmon. So I, I was freaking out because orcas were like the highlight of my trip when I was eight. And I only got like one little blurry shot of them. And this time when we were on the boat, you know, like I had my camera set up now and I, I have all these photos of its fin just like 
going into the mountains and it, oh, it was amazing. I mean, I had the, I had the time of my life it, and I met Tris, who's now one of my closest friends, you know, just being able to be in that place with so many people who loved it just as much as me, I, I think is really important. Great. Yeah. I was asking Tris about asking her about her travels you know she's quite the world traveler and I asked her who is the most interesting person you've ever met whether on rustic pathways or just like anywhere and she said it was you and I can totally see why now (laughs) yeah you're very inspiring thank you so we have a lot of programs where students encounter wildlife so on our trip to Costa Rica for example our students see sloths they see tropical birds they see different kinds of monkeys. Do you have any tips for them to help them capture a good shot? Yeah, actually, I went to Costa Rica a couple of years ago and photographed a lot of sloths and tropical birds and everything. And I think sloths are a great opportunity for practice because they're not really going anywhere. So you can get really crafty. I think since mainly they're up in trees, you can get a lot of cool vertical shots of them, especially if their head is poking around the other side of the trunk or a branch or if they have one of their babies. And the best part about it is that you don't need to have a lot of light um, because your shutter speed doesn't need to be that high because they're you know, moving so slowly. But with tropical birds, I would say lighting is pretty necessary because you need a high shutter speed because a lot of them are moving around constantly and are always in flight. There aren't really a lot of them that are very stationary. So I'd say you know, both of, photographing both is a different experience, but I mean, I, I loved my time there and I think um, both are like a great opportunity for practice, especially, you know, birds in flight too and stationary animals. Okay, thank you for that. That's very helpful. And what would you say to someone who wants to start wildlife photography? Like where should they start? I, I started with a point and shoot and was just photographing all the different frogs, snakes and turtles I could find in my yard. You can photograph anything. Like I, I, I would photograph my dog licking the dishes in our dishwasher you know, you, you can get crafty with so many things. And my advice would be to try new angles. You know, there, you know, there's macro photography, there's landscape, you know, you, you, you can, there's even architectural photography. Like it doesn't have to be wildlife, but I, I think that there are so many different ways that you can tell a story and, you know, you can photograph your siblings at a sporting event game. I used to photograph my brother playing soccer and baseball. You know, I think that trying all of them is really necessary and vital into kind of developing your own style. And I learned that a lot, you know, for, for the longest time I was strict, like I only want to do wildlife. But once I started to branch out and be able to photograph people and um, cities and buildings and really get into kind of macro photography or like flowers and landscapes, it really helped me um, develop my own style and branch out. Thank you so much, Ashley, for taking the time to chat with us about your photography. Yeah, of course. Of course. Thank you. If you'd like to test out your wildlife photography skills, then make sure to check out our travel programs in the video description. And we also have college programs available as well.